don't send me any hate mail, please, but I have never gotten the fuss over a certain Colonel-owned fried chicken place, if you get what I mean. And I think I can probably do a better job at creating a fried chicken sandwich. So today, I'm making my Indonesian flavored fried chicken sandwich. You wait, it's good. In this spice mix, we're gonna stick to Asian spices. I've got ground coriander and ground cumin. That goes in. Chili powder, if you want it to be spicy, you can add more. If you don't want it to be spicy, you don't have to add it at all. But I promise just a little bit really makes a difference. Garlic powder, it looks like quite a lot, but you want this chicken to be super flavorful. And finally, I've got some ground ginger that gives a nice bit of warmth. And the last thing that goes in, this is super Indonesian. That's the Indonesian fried chicken. It's some turmeric. And that's gonna give the chicken a really nice color. And this earthy flavor, which you will recognize if you eat nasi lemak chicken or any kind of fried chicken in Malaysia, Singapore or Indonesia. Now just stir the spices up until they're nice and combined. You want to break down any lumps there are. Now the spice mix is done, I'm going to take two tablespoons of it and put it in another bowl. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of buttermilk. I really hate to say this, but there isn't really an acceptable substitute for buttermilk in this occasion, but I suppose you could use watered-down yogurt. Just get it to this sort of consistency and you're on the right track. So pour that in. And to that, I'm just going to add one egg and one tablespoon of salt. Now just whisk this all up. Once everything is combined, you get this really beautiful yellow buttermilk marinade. And we're just going to combine this with the chicken in a Ziploc bag. This is a boneless chicken thigh with the skin still on. And I'm using chicken leg because when's the last time you met an Asian person who likes chicken breast? You can use it, I won't judge, but this is definitely a lot juicier if you use dark meat. Now just add the marinade to the bag. Squeeze all the air out, seal it up. And then you want to keep this in the fridge for at least four hours, but overnight is best. And you're going to get a nice, tender, juicy piece of chicken in the morning. Before we fry the chicken, I want to make another Indonesian element of my Indonesian fried chicken sandwich. I'm going to make some sambal aioli. And aioli is basically a fancy word for a garlic-based condiment that comes from Spain and France. But I'm really, really shortcutting this shit because I'm using prepackaged mayonnaise. There's nothing wrong with it, especially when it's Japanese mayonnaise. I could eat it off a spoon. So just squeeze in about half a cup. And I did promise sambal aioli, so I'm using sambal balachan, but you can use any other kind of sambal or chili sauce. You could even use, if you're feeling very Indonesian, some of this ABC chili sauce. But that's a different kind of flavor. Today, I want that really almost pungent, funky flavor in this aioli. So two tablespoons of this sambal goes in. I did say aioli, so this needs garlic. I've got two cloves of raw garlic. Just plop them in there. I'm gonna dress some slaw with this, so it needs that sweet and sour tang. Just putting a little bit of sugar, one teaspoon. The sambal is pretty salty already, but you do need a little bit more flavor, so just a quarter teaspoon more of salt goes in. And for that tang I was talking about, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of vinegar. I'm using Japanese rice vinegar, but you can use apple cider vinegar, or even lime juice would be really nice here. Now I've got my favorite kitchen tool. This is so useful. If you don't have one, get yourself an immersion blender. And basically just whiz this until it's completely smooth. Now you have this beautiful, orangey, pretty funky smelling, delicious sambal aioli. I'm gonna take about a third of this and dress 
some vegetables. I've got some finely sliced cabbage and some julienne carrots. It's a really simple slaw. And this is gonna go on top of our fried chicken. So take a third of the sambal aioli that you've prepared. And then just toss up the slaw so you have a nice coating of the tangy, spicy sambal aioli on the crunchy vegetables. Now all my elements are basically ready to go, so I'm going to fry some chicken and it's going to be hot. Before we fry the chicken, I'm going to make the flour-based coating. And this is what gets that chicken really delicious and crispy. So I'm using a 3 to 1 plain flour to corn flour ratio. I'm going to add half a cup of cornstarch to one and a half cups of plain flour. And that just decreases the gluten content. It gets it to be less chewy, more crispy. Every single bite of this chicken steak has got to be full of flavour. So one teaspoon of salt into the flour mixture. The remainder of that Indonesian spice mix that we made earlier. And finally, just to make things extra crispy, one teaspoon of baking powder goes in as well. That just gets the entire mixture to aerate a little bit better and you don't get that dense, floury taste. Just whisk all of these dry ingredients together until you get a nice, even mixture. And now, we are ready to fry some chicken. The chicken has done its nice bath in the turmeric, the spice marinade. And what that brining has done is make sure that all the juices are locked tight into the meat so that when we fry it and we cut it, it's going to be really beautiful and juicy. Just open up the bag, grab your chicken, and shake off any of the excess buttermilk marinade. And now, drop it into the spiced flour mixture. You're going to turn the chicken around a few times in the flour. You want to make sure that you get flour into every nook and cranny in the chicken. You can use your tongs to press the flour on so you get a beautiful, sticky coating. Don't worry if the flour mixture and the batter is looking a little bit shaggy. All those bits that are sticking out those are going to be the really delicious crispy bits when it hits the hot oil. So once it's looking nicely coated, just shake off any of the excess flour and then transfer the chicken to a plate. Now I'm just going to take this chicken and fry it in oil that's been heated to 190 degrees Celsius. That is the perfect temperature for this recipe, so if you have a thermometer at home, use it. It's going to cook in there, skin side down first, and then turn it around halfway through for a total of 6 minutes. It's going to be juicy, it's going to be crispy, and it's going to be good. They say time waits for no man, well, fried chicken waits for no woman, so let's move fast. I've got a really beautiful, squishy, soft bun. I'm trying very hard not to squeeze it. And this is the base of my fried chicken sandwich. I'm gonna take a little spoon of the sambal aioli that we made earlier and swish it onto the bottom bun. Next, our beautiful, juicy, crispy Indonesian fried chicken. Some of the slaw we made earlier goes on top of that. For a little bit more Indonesian flavour, I've got some bawang goreng or fried shallots. And I'm just gonna liberally, I do mean very liberally, top off the slaw with some of these. Just because I like mine spicy, I'm gonna add a touch of Indonesian chilli sauce. Now close this, give it a little bit of a squish and prepare yourself for food porn at its finest. Mm -hmm. 